Hello everyone, happy and blessed Sabbath to each and every one of you. This is Brother and Pastor Craig, and I pray that you guys are all having a wonderful and blessed Sabbath day, and I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful week to come, because the signs of the times are continuing to proclaim that the end is near, and we've got to continue to do more about examining our lives in these last days, because we can see that one day this is all going to end. And we can know all the prophecies, we can know all the things that are going on in this world, we can see and understand the current events and all the armies of the enemy are just surrounding us in every direction, sending forth all they can like they did to the prophet Job and all the sufferings and the pains and the persecution and the accusing and the backbiting and the murmuring, complaining against him and his life that he had to go through, we're going through all these things and it's known better as the Jacob's time of trouble that's going to continue to increase and increase on all sides as we walk through the valley of decision and continue to press forward, it's going to get worse and worse and worse until we feel so broken and so beat up that so many people will just want to give up but the true Christian soldiers will keep pressing forward and understanding that these things that happen to us today are there for the purpose of getting us to be stronger and not making us weaker. We've got to continue to go to the spiritual gym, which God puts us through so that not to be destroyed, but to have victory and to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Because like I've told you before, unless you go to the gym, you cannot expect to be strong and fast. If, if you're not going to go to the gym, you're just going to be feeble and weak and not able to lift things and carry your own weight and and what have you. And this is why it's crucial that um, we, we do all that we can to look at ourselves, examine ourselves, and see where we're at in our walk to the city of God. Because we know that the narrow road to heaven, which a few there be that find it, is not an easy march. It is a battle where we got to continue to contend against the roaring lion Satan and those fallen angels that came with him down to this earth and those humans that are at their side waiting and willing and wanting to absolutely destroy all those who would seek the kingdom of God. And through our obedience, they're going to know who we are. And this is a visible fruit that we need to continue to understand that we've got to apply it in our lives so that we can be more like Christ and let that light shine forth so that they know who we are and seeing that there is a God in heaven who's full of love and life and having no murmurings and complainings and disputing and backbiting and fault finding and accusing and doing like all those other people have done to us in our lives. We've, we've got to do more in becoming like our Savior. And this is why he's our perfect example and the pattern that we must follow. By learning from these past experiences that we'll be going over today when you guys start your study after I'm, I'm done speaking here, they're very important. Every word recorded in the King James Bible is very important to understand because these are in samples for us to know what we should and should not be doing and what will be the result of us doing good we're doing bad we'll either be cursed or we'll be blessed and while we're going through these tests and these trials and these things that maybe come to us in our life we have to understand to put on the character of Christ if we're going to continue to murmur and complain and, and dispute and, and do uh, wickedness if we're doing that today how are you getting prepared for the test that's coming don't think for a moment that if we're failing in our trials and our in our tests today that we're going to be able to stand in that mark of the beast test in the future we've got to we've got to get this train moving in our life that is going to go down the road as quick as possible to reach that mark and that finish line that we're putting on christ because we're gonna have to really put him on you're not going to be wanting to murmur and complain about what your accusers and wicked people that are going to be coming to your door to try to kill you for not worshiping the beast in his image. You're not going to stand there murmuring, complaining, and disputing with them. You've got to look to Christ and how he handled his time before he went to the cross. Silence is golden. And having the love of Christ and even going to the cross and bearing your own cross and praying for those who are utterly trying to murder you and to, to destroy you and your family mentally physically spiritually emotionally you just pray for them 
because that's what we've got to do in this world and and that's learning to develop that perfect love and you have to also remember and understand that those that we may be murmuring to and complaining about and and pointing fingers at and blaming others and disputing with that person or that christian they're bought with a price my friend they're bought with a price and when we talk to them or the way that we treat them christ is standing right next to us he can see it all his angels can see it all the recording angels can see it all and if this is the type of character that we're going to have today that's what you're going to have in the future and that is my friends is very important to know that that's got to be changed because that baggage that character is not going to be found in heaven it's not a pleasant thing and, and I understand and know that where we come from the West and stuff and how they teach us and talk to us and treat us and, and that this got to be like this and it's got to be perfect like that. They got to do it with yelling and screaming in our ear and stuff. Regardless of what they've done and how we've been trained in Babylon, if you grew up in that type of atmosphere, you've got to not be doing that. We've all got to not be doing that because it's not good and it's not Christ-like. We, we've got to treat everyone the best way we possibly can in the love and the service of Christ because what we do unto others is either going to reflect that Christ is working in our life or it's not it's not a pleasant thing to see you would not be reflecting Christ or I would not be for reflecting Christ and this is why we got to examine ourselves a lot of people don't want to examine themselves they don't think it's important just like they don't think the prophecies are important or it puts them to sleep or they don't care well if you don't want to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and listen to the to the pastor or those who are you know trying to help you in your life then that's going to be your downfall it's not mine I'm working my own salvation out with fear and trembling and I tried to examine myself so much that sometimes I can't even I can't even sleep good but that's because heaven is very important to me and I know it's important to a lot of you guys and so we've got to focus on our walk we got to focus on the character of Christ and we've got to examine ourselves continually and I'm gonna keep saying it because it's very important and again we, we've gone over so much prophecy and, and so much current events and so much of what's happening in the world and we understand their plans and all the things that are coming and the news industry keeps spewing out the same stories, the same punchline, oh this and that and how all these things are happening in the world and that really is fine but what's super important is that we start putting on Christ a lot more because the scriptures are clear in what it says Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 says do all things without murmurings and disputings that's a commandment that's very important that's a commandment and we've got to we've got to put that in our in our life and we got to sink it in our mind in James chapter 5 verse 9 says grudge not one against another brethren lest you be condemned that's a strong word that's big time trouble behold the judge standeth before the door he sees what's going on if we're going to be doing this and grudging up against one another or putting somebody down or, or or not speaking properly like we should or how you would want to be spoken to and treated it, it's not gonna it's not gonna fly with Christ it's not gonna be a good thing a lot of people think they're gonna enter into heaven and a lot of people think that they're not gonna enter into heaven well if you look at your lifestyle and you see what you're doing and what you're failing in you should sit you should stand there while you examine yourself and saying what I just did or what I'm about to do is not gonna help me get into heaven it's not gonna help me pass my future tests in the future this is a wise and faithful saying that when you examine yourself before you speak think use the brain that God gave you use the heart how are you gonna feel if you say this learn to bridle the toxic tongue because it's only going to condemn us in the end, just like it said. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, it says, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Which we have a perfect example in the Old Testament, which we're going to be going over today. What happens to those who want to murmur and complain? And when you do those types of things, it also leads to accusing backbiting, fault finding, pointing fingers at others when it's actually your fault and it's actually your problem. It's your test and this is why it keeps coming to you or to me or to others. We've got to again examine everything in every situation as much as possible. Before a situation comes to you a lot of people 
like to roll their eyes up. That is a sign that that's not good. And so we have Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 where it says, That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as the light of the world. If we're going to be the light of the world, we don't want to be murmuring, complaining, and pointing fingers, and accusing, and backbiting, and, and, and speaking harshly to anyone, because they're bought with a price, Christ is watching, and the angels are there too, and they're looking at their eternal family, which you have a chance to be, or not. And this is why, again, it's very crucial. Examine your life. Examine what you are doing wrong because it's very important to change and to let the old man die and become a new creature in Christ. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.